Hi folks, in this review video we're going to take a look at this brand new ZWO FF80 Quadruplet Refractor Telescope. A big shout out to ZWO and also astroshop.eu in Germany who actually loaned me this telescope so I'm able to make this review without any strings attached, so thanks a lot. And yeah, of course in this video we're going to take a look at the technical specifications of this telescope, which actually got me really excited to test out this telescope and of course we're going to capture one of the most popular and brightest targets in the winter sky, which is the Orion Nebula. It is the closest and brightest nebula visible to the naked eye in the winter sky in the constellation Orion. The Orion Nebula is easy to find just below Orion's belt and it is even visible to the naked eye. This is an awesome stellar nursery where new stars are being born in a cloud of gas called a molecular cloud. Around these young stars are young protoplanetary disks, places where new planets like ours may be forming right now. Let's talk about the technical specifications of this telescope and the one that got me most interested and excited was actually this FF which stands for flat field. Indeed, the FF in ZWO's FF80 stands for Flat Field Optical Design. This means you'll get nice round stars across your camera's field of view without the need to purchase an additional field flattener. There is also no struggle to calculate and achieve the exact back focus required for the field flattener to avoid elongated stars towards the edges of the field of view with other telescopes. Thanks to the 3 plus 1 quadruplet lens design with two extra low dispersion elements, this lens promises high quality color views of the night sky. The telescope comes standard with a manual rotator, allowing you to frame objects exactly as you want them for astrophotography. With an 80mm aperture and a 600mm focal length, its native f ratio is 7.5. An optional 0.76 reducer can be purchased with the telescope, reducing the focal length to 456mm at f5.7. This provides a larger and brighter field of view, minimizing your imaging time. The telescope boasts a compact and lightweight design, with the telescope weighing only 3.9 kilograms and the full package, including tube rings and other accessories, weighing 4.7 kilograms. The telescope includes several photographic adapters, making it easy to attach your camera for astrophotography purposes. It also features a dual-speed rack and pinion focuser for fine-tuning your focus. For this review, I paired my FF80 telescope with an ASI 2600MC Pro color camera. This APS-C sized astro camera boasts 26 megapixels, falling just shy of a full frame dimension. This choice allows us to assess whether the FF80 telescope consistently produces round, well color balanced stars extending all the way to the edges of your photos. Additionally, I use the ASI Air Plus to control the entire astrophotography setup. It has become my primary go-to device for capturing deep sky objects. You can explore more details about the camera and the ASI Air in other videos on my channel and stay tuned for future content. Guys, it's freezing, it's minus 10 Celsius, so let me first put on some warm gloves here. If you could kindly consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons while I'm aligning this telescope mount, I'm pretty confident I can share more than just the Orion Nebula with you. Your support would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. So guys, this is really exciting. I just realized that we have a new comet in early January 2024 in the night sky. Let me show it here in Solarium Plus. I hope you can see it. 
Uh, the name of the comet is 62P and um, it's rising in the constellation Leo. So let's try to catch that comet first using the FF80 refractor telescope. Guys, I hope you saw that. That's the constellation Orion rising in the eastern sky in early January. But before we're going to check out the Orion Nebula uh, as promised, I first want to check out M35. And M35 is this open star cluster. So we can really see if the FF80 is able to produce well color balanced and round sharp stars all the way towards the edges of the photos we're going to take with the FF80. Let's check it out. Open star clusters like Messier number 35 are amazing to look at and photograph. Astronomers have calculated that on average there is at least one planet per star, resulting in many billions of potentially habitable planets in our Milky Way alone. You can also spot NGC 2158 in the picture and the stars in this star cluster are believed to be a whopping 2 billion years old. Amazing isn't it? This is a stacked image of 30 photos each with a 1 minute exposure and it showcases that stars do appear nice and round with minimal elongation or color aberrations even towards the edges of the picture. I have not cropped this photo, so you're viewing the full 26 megapixel sized image. You can see that there are very little elongation or color aberrations in the stars, even at the pixel level. For more info about the picture and the telescope, you can find a link to my blog on my website at astroformspace.com. <laughs> it's really getting cold, but let's also try to capture the Orion Nebula as promised with the FF80 quadruplet telescope. I paired the telescope with the ASI 2600 MC Pro. That's a color camera, so I'm going to take regular color pictures of the nebula, but I'm also going to use an H alpha filter, that's a hydrogen alpha filter, because I really want to capture that ionized hydrogen that's also present in that stellar nursery in the Orion Nebula. So let's see what we can do. quickly give a big shout out again to astroshop.eu and ZWO who loaned me the telescope for this review without any strings attached. Astroshop is a highly reliable astro shop in Europe with physical stores in Germany, France, Belgium and other countries across Europe. 
I bought lots of my Astro gear from astroshop.eu and the deliveries were always reliable and on time as promised without any issues. Links to the FF80 telescope available at Astroshop and other reliable telescope shops around Europe and the USA are provided in the video description below. So let me give you my final verdict. The FF80 quadruplet telescope consistently delivered round and well color corrected stars in my photos and provided sharp views of the Orion Nebula. Mounting my camera and filter wheel to the telescope was easy thanks to the adapters that came with the telescope. I could easily frame the objects exactly the way I wanted it due to the manual rotator that also comes with the FF80. Additionally, precise manual focusing is also easy thanks to the dual speed rack and pinion focuser. Despite the fact that the f7.5 ratio is a bit on the slow side for light collection, its slower f ratio ensures excellent color correction and round stars across your images, which is especially useful for bigger APS-C and full frame camera sensors. This eliminates the need for an additional field flattener and the associated challenges of calculating and implementing the correct back focus. In practice, this means no more nights spent troubleshooting elongated stars at the edges of your photos. If you desire a faster telescope, an optional reducer is available to achieve f5.7 at 456mm focal length. I'll explore this option in a future video, so be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. You can find links to the FF80 telescope available at astroshop.eu and other reputable vendors across Europe and the USA in the video description below. That wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it and please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Until next time, I wish you clear skies.